Absolutely. That is what every Thursday is about. Your catalyst for economic growth on the corporate hub. My name is Sharon I. Torre. Favorite Frank is my name. A very good morning to you and thank you so much for joining us on Activate at Hope FM. This is where you listen and live. We are happy to be in your company. And today we are honored and privileged to have with us uh, Mr. Francis Ayeko. And uh, he will be helping us uh, through a conversation. Very, very important. And we are going to be learning to write to persuade yes because you can just write uh-huh. but then uh, are you really persuasive right in the writing so that you write and it's you know it's not going anywhere yeah. whatever you're saying does not add much you know to the reader and you, you see uh, francis ayeko is uh, someone who's experienced in that field yes and he'll be giving us insights on what to do so that we can write to persuade. He is a journalist and a media trainer, but he also runs an organization that he will mention in a brief towards the end of this program that it is all about opinion editorial. All right, so without much ado, good morning, Francis. Good morning, Sharon. Good to have you. you. Good to uh, have me too. I'm glad to be here. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate Thank you so much for agreeing to come in. Thank you also for, you know, um, agreeing to guide us through this conversation, which is your cup of tea. I mean, it is what you do. <laughs> yes, that's true. That's what I do on a daily basis. Right. And uh, I find joy and fulfillment in that. Yeah. Uh, trying to help people to communicate effectively with the public. Yes. Yes. So uh, uh, if you may allow me, I can just introduce myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, good morning, listeners. My name is Francis Ayeko. I'm a journalist, I'm an editor, a publisher, and a media trainer. Um, uh, mostly, right nowadays, what I do is uh, training people on how to become thought leaders in their fields uh, through opinion writing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. And above all, I love the Lord. I'm born again. Amen. Amen. You mentioned something very important, uh, Francis, to become uh, thought leaders. Yes. What is that about? What is, what is it about becoming a thought leader in your space? Okay. Uh, thought leadership is, um, when you're a thought leader, it means you, you have set yourself apart uh, through your expertise. Uh, you are the go-to person in, <clears throat> in that field because uh, you are knowledgeable. Your knowledge in that field is above average. Mm -hmm. So in open writing, uh, thought leadership is, uh, thought leadership happens when you start, you write stories, uh, open articles, or uh, I, I believe at some point we are going to define what the, that is. Mm -hmm. You write stories that can be published in the media and they have unique perspectives. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are unique perspectives, they are insightful, and uh, you know, in your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. So the more you continue writing uh, uh, in that area, yeah. the more you set yourself apart, the more you become an authority in your field. And uh, before you know it, uh, you'll be invited uh, for uh, maybe to speak on issues that you have been writing about. So uh, in summary, you are the go-to person in that field because uh, you are now visible. Mm -hmm. You've been writing about uh, a particular issue and people know you can associate you with that. And the, thing, the key thing to note about thought leadership mm -hmm. is that you are an authority because you provide unique perspective on that topic. And therefore, uh, most of the time you are insightful and people come to you uh, maybe for advice. Uh, they know if I want to know something about this thing, uh, this is the person to go to. It gives you visibility mm -hmm. All right. and a following. Mm -hmm. Or just to uh, make us understand, what is op-ed writing? Okay. Um, Sharon had alluded to it. Um, uh, op-ed is the short form of opinion editorials. Right. I know that might not make a lot of sense for someone who has never written, but what it means is you write an opinion article or a commentary mm -hmm. uh, as an outsider. Outsider here means you are not part of uh, the publication you are writing for. Mm -hmm. You are writing in your field. 
uh, if you're a doctor, you see uh, an issue that you feel strongly about, then you write about it in a way that will be palatable to the public. Mm -hmm. So in summary, uh, these are stories uh, that are written by outsiders uh, to be published in a newspaper or a magazine uh, by somebody who is an expert in that field. They're right. usually well researched. Mm -hmm. uh, they're usually insightful. Uh, they are not your average story. You, th there has to be a lot of thinking that goes into writing such a story. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more important thing is that they have to be accessible. All right. Accessible means you write it in a language that can be understood by many people. Because uh, 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 most newspaper readers, uh, they don't want jargon. You don't write like you're writing. If you're a doctor, you don't write like you're writing for fellow doctors. Right. You write like uh, someone, you want to be understood by the general public. So your language has to be simple, uh, devoid of jargon. All right. Now, uh, just talking about someone who's a thinker, uh, what does it take? What uh, does it take to be an open <coughs> writer? And um, how can one start writing publishable, publishable articles, that is? You know, because I'm thinking, just mm -hmm. before you answer that, Francis, mm -hmm. I'm thinking that you mentioned a doctor writing. So I'm assuming a teacher writing, mm -hmm. a human resource um, expert writing. A um, journalist a writing. A journalist. No, journalist. Well, journalist <laughs> is our thing. So <laughs> I'm thinking about those people. A banker, you yes. know, like an accountant writing. You know, writing has been, you know, thought to be something for... People who went to a journalism school, for example. <laughs> but what I'm hearing you saying is that one can write regardless of which field they are in, and that is what you help people in doing. You're absolutely right, uh, Sharon. And uh, I'll combine that with the question Frank is asking. Mm -hmm. um, anyone can write if they have uh, the passion to write and they are ready to learn how to write. So anyone from any field, as long as you can write what we call literate English, all you need to know, uh, especially if you want to write uh, opinion articles, you, you only need to know the do's and don'ts. Uh, what, what are editors looking for in an article? Mm -hmm. That's what you need to do. And in my training, I train people from all, all, all walks of life, so to speak, and uh, all professional backgrounds. Okay. Uh, if, if you would allow me, right now I'm running a, um, a class that comprises people, I have lawyers, mm -hmm. I have people from real estate, I have uh, a HR guy, I have a medical doctor, I have someone from uh, human resource, it's all kinds of people, mm -hmm. and all of them are writing. And even this morning, uh, one of them, one of, one of the lawyer trainees, has been published um, in in a business paper this morning. Mm -hmm. So you, you're very right. But uh, let me combine that with the question Frank was right uh, was asking. Really, what it takes? Uh, you are not a trained journalist, uh, uh, but you want to write. You you're a pilot, for instance. You want to write yeah. uh, articles that will make sense to the public, but first to the editor. Mm -hmm. So what does it really really take? First, it takes. Um, Strong writing uh, skills, that one can be learned, it can be developed. And uh, as I said earlier, as long as you can write literate English, you can write uh, good stories. So you have to have that writing ability. If, uh, if maybe you, uh, there are some areas you have a challenge, you can always learn. Can I give you an exam a good example mm -hmm. with myself? My background is not journalism. Oh. I'm a trained land economist. Mm -hmm. I'm a trained real estate expert. Allah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but uh, while I was in college, mm -hmm. uh, they normally call it the writing bug. It mm -hmm. beat me. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I love this thing. I can write. Actually, I started by writing career by writing uh, for Taifa Leo. I was writing in Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that's how I started. Uh, I started doing it while I was in college. So when I was done with a real estate course, I was like, hey, uh, what do you really want to do with the rest of your life? And I actually I started job searching. I wanted to be a valuer, mm -hmm. I wanted to be an estate agent, a mm -hmm. property manager and all that. Mm -hmm. But then I I was doing it, uh, it half-heartedly. Then I had to, one day I had to 
sit down with myself and ask myself exactly what you want to do with the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. said, I want to write. Then I forgot about job searching for uh, the valuation job and all that. And I started writing. That's how I started writing uh, my writing career. Then I continued learning. So you, you, you can learn these things. Uh, mm -hmm. And as I was saying, you start with uh, having a strong uh, writing skills. Mm -hmm. uh, you can learn, you can always, I mean, I mean it's, it's continuous. Mm -hmm. But then uh, you also, if you are going to write op-eds, you have to have a clear and informed perspective on current issues. Mm -hmm. That's very important for opinion writing. Mm -hmm. right. That word, in, informed perspective, is really what opinion uh, is about. Mm -hmm. Opinion is, is, the kind of opinion we are talking about uh, are called informed opinions. That means they are backed uh, with research mm -hmm. and it's not just uh, a warmed up something that, you know, I sit down and I start writing. So you, you really have to uh, have that. But above, um, uh, on top of that, mm -hmm. you also need to learn how to write compellingly. Mm -hmm. Your arguments, you know, opinion writing is about arguing. You're like, it's like in a court of law, you have a case to prosecute. You want to convince people that, hey, um, uh, if you're a lawyer, you're saying, I'm representing Frank, and Frank did not commit this crime, and this is why. So um, an op-ed uh, writer is like an advocate. You have a position you have to take. You remember we were talking about informed perspective mm -hmm. on current issues? So you have a perspective and or a stand, let me simplify it, a stand mm -hmm. to take. So you have to do it compellingly. Uh, your arguments, you have to back it up with, uh, with research, mm -hmm. and then you also have to do it respectfully and persuasively. All right. Now, talking about, you've talked about uh, the language skill, that literate English. Does it mean one uh, uh, doing Swahili cannot write? They well, can. They, they can. can, right? They can. Mm -hmm. I started my writing career, as I said, by writing for Taifa Leo mm -hmm. for many years. And uh, it's the mastery of language. Right. Mm -hmm. The language does not matter. Whichever you can even language. write op-eds in French. Yeah. You're right. Yes. All right. Oh, your mother tongue for that one. Yes, okay. your, your mother tongue if you have a mastery. <laughs> have somewhere where that can be published okay fine we want to uh in a short while get to you know uh know how you know if effective opinion um editorial writing can help christians engage in ming meaningful conversations i love that you say that you are born again and so we as christians you know it has um it has been a lot of you know people that are not born again mm -hmm. who are you know going out there and publishing things yeah. so i hear you saying that as christians we can also come out mm -hmm. and voice our opinions regarding different issues so i want our listener to stay with us because we are going to be back in just a few moments uh, but be, but in the meantime if you have a question 20933 is our sms line 0717400555 is our whatsapp line and you can also reach us across social media at hope fm live don't go away Hope FM, another quality service from Christ, is the answer ministry. Hope Media is dedicated to utilizing various forms of media to spread the message of hope, love, and redemption to all people around the world. These units include Hope FM, Hope TV, Hope Recording Studios, Hope Creative, Hope Digital. At Hope Media, we believe that media can be a powerful tool for spreading the message of hope as well as grow your business through advertisements. And we do this with excellence. For more information regarding our services, please visit www.hopemediakenya.org or call us on 0709-861-180. Hope Media, we keep hope alive. Get ready to unwind. unwind. Mm. Oh, yeah. Relax and let Maria in Patroba guide you home on Route Year 2. All of us populate heaven. Yeah. And we populate hell. hell. <laughs> True. Route Year 2. Yes, I have come to say.
Ati yato mambu ikibadilika utasema ati yato eh ndi ulini approach. Sio mimi ndo nilikuwa approach. Uh, men that say that bana. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start questioning uh, your masculinity because how how why would you tell a lady that? Getting you ulini. Route year two, the coolest and the safest way home with Maria and Patroba. Weekdays from 4 p.m. Listen and leave. Listen and live on air, online, and across the globe. This is Hope FM, where you listen and live. live, live, live. The Corporate Hub on Activate. Your catalyst for economic growth. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, Mr. Frank Francis is still with us and we are, you know, talking about how to be a persuasive writer or persu uh, writing persuasively. And uh, we just before we went for the break, we were uh, alluding to um, the fact that, you know, Christians need to now come up, rise up to the occasion, you know, and also offer their voices in, uh, op in, in matters, uh, you know, that are going on in the society and moral issues. So how how can how can you know this help christians you know to come out uh, francis yeah thank thank you very much sharon uh before i answer that let me just uh, answer the second part of the last question uh, frank asked mm -hmm. um which is um how how can i start writing publishable articles uh, quickly i usually have a formula and the formula i can i normally abbreviate it uh, as ro that is R A W. Mm -hmm. R stands for read. A stands for analyze. W stands for write. So the best way to learn how to write is to write. But how do you start? You start by reading what others have written, and then you don't just read uh, casually. Read analytically. Analyze their style. What you like about what they have, uh, the, the way they have written it. Uh, then you start writing. Uh, when you are analyzing, it will rub onto you, uh, especially if you are doing it consistently. So uh, remember, Ro, uh, read, analyze, and then write. And write, write, write. Let me ask Francis before we move on. The writing, the reading, is it reading specifically of the areas that you are interested in or just reading? Not, not, not general reading. If, if you want to uh, write op-eds, then you look for uh, good opus that have been published. Okay. If you want to write, we have other forms of writing like, like feature writing. If you want to be a feature writer, read good feature stories mm. and uh, make sure you have some mentors, people whom you really respect. Uh, if it's opus, maybe you can start by reading some influential columnists. That's a, a good place to start. Okay. Yes. Interesting because there is uh, one Rehabu wrote in and said that she's interested in writing plays and uh, she would want to venture in it and she was wondering if you could mention something about it. And I believe this, this role applies to all kinds of writing, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. It does. Any kind of writing you want to do, uh, the, the starting point is to uh, read good articles in that area okay. so you, you 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 need to you can get help from, from someone who can help you identify the kind of stories uh you want to write uh, about yeah so any kind of writing uh, for me that's how i started and that's what i see working for most people uh make sure you have some someone who can mentor you even if they don't know for me i had uh, some mentors who did not know they were mentoring me. Mm -hmm. When we finally met in the newsroom, I would read for them almost word for word some parts of their stories, how their stories started, and they were like, mm -hmm. oh, where did you uh, get to know that? When they had long forgotten uh, how they had written that story. Mm -hmm. So, Ro applies to any form of writing. All right. If you want to be a poet, then immerse yourself in poetry read poetry uh, uh, uh look for some poets you 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 admire and read their works and analyze okay then start writing okay All right going back to the christian perspective please help us bring it bring it out okay um in our society today there's a lot going on as we know even in let's just talk about our country there's a lot a, a lot uh, uh, many things that are going on and uh, we have people commenting on these things uh 
people from uh, different, uh, they, they comment on them from different perspectives. But what I normally find uh, missing is that the so-called Christian voice mm -hmm. or the Christian uh, perspective. So Christians, uh, just like any other citizen, can comment on anything. And you remember, we are the salt of the earth. Amen. So if we keep quiet, mm -hmm. who will bring out that Christian perspective? So open writing, uh, again, is a platform that Christians can use yeah. to uh, champion Christian principles. I don't mean preaching here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean okay, preaching. Okay. <laughs> Remember, the Bible says that uh, we, we, we must be as humble as dove, yes. but as wise as serpents. Right. So, if, if you are writing for a circular platform, please, you need to know the do's and don'ts. Okay. Uh, uh, you, you, you don't write uh, for them as you would write for uh, a Christian publication. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, it's a platform that is there for us. And uh, uh, maybe I, I, I didn't mention, it's, it's good to know that uh, almost every newspaper in this country and even outside normally uh, has at least two pages that they reserve for open writers. Those, that's, those are outsiders. Mm -hmm. So why don't we appropriate this platform mm. as Christians and then a champion of Christian principles without preaching. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm really stressing that <laughs> mm -hmm. because sometimes we, we accuse the media of being anti-Christian yet we are the ones who did not do our homework well. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we need to do our homework well and understand the platform we want to get published on. Okay. Yes, so um, how can we do this? Mm -hmm. uh, by just writing and what do you write or how do you write? You must have good perspectives um if maybe you want to write about uh, uh the economic hard times we are going through right now you need to have an outstanding perspective that champions in a way a christian principle mm. like um you know the bible says that we take care of the poor uh, of the poor yes and uh if we 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 have an economy that uh is um is is not is is not really good for for the poor then you can say that you can write that principle without quoting even a yes. verse okay. mm -hmm. because what do we want we want to pass across a message right. and we should pass it uh with the readers in mind who are you really targeting we are ta when you're targeting the general public it's not the same as when you're targeting christians mm. so we, we need to be persuasive but also respectful as, as believers, the most important thing is to have insightful perspectives and and uh, you do meaningful engagement through your uh, well-reasoned article. So the standards are the same. Mm. Whether you are writing as a heathen or uh, someone from another religion or as a Christian, if you are targeting uh, the general uh, publications, uh, the secular publications, the standards are the same. Okay. All right. So you just need to know how to persuasively uh, pass across your point. Oh, now talking about uh, talking to everyone out there, I'm being mindful of uh, the audience. Yes. Now sometimes you one may create a piece of writing that mm -hmm. may spark debate or controversy. Very true. How do uh, does one? Uh, how should one deal with such controversy? And I like it when I write an article. Mm -hmm that causes debate or controversy <laughs> and actually you know francis <laughs> before you answer yeah. it is part of the reason why probably many christians run away from opinion writing mm -hmm. because they fear it mm -hmm. will spark controversy and debate so where do i run to <laughs> and, and uh, do you mean controversy is what will make it sell <laughs> uh not really mm -hmm. But remember what, what we said earlier, that uh, if you are writing an opinion piece, you really have to have um, a strong perspective, a, a strong point of view. Mm -hmm. So inevitably, not everybody is going to receive it positively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when I'm taking a stand against something, let's say um, I'm taking a stand against abortion. Mm -hmm. 
for instance. You know the campaigns that have been going on, we have people who are pro. Yeah. Do you think they are all going to be impressed? Not at all. They might call me names uh, because they don't buy my point of view. But that does not necessarily make my point of view wrong. Mm -hmm. So controversy is, I'm not saying uh, you, you need to intentionally be controversial, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. but you need to take a stand. When you're writing an op-ed, one of the things you must never do is to sit on the fence. You must take a stand mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, say, this is what I stand for. You do it convincingly, res uh, respectfully, and uh, convincingly using facts. Mm. So uh, back to the question. So how do you handle that when there's a controversy or there's a, a, a debate? And I, uh, as I, I had said earlier, I like it when people debate my articles because it means it's it's impactful. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how do you handle this? Uh, first of all, you need to stay calm and then be respectful. Mm -hmm. uh, acknowledge the fact that um, not everybody will agree with you. In my in my my training, one of the things I do we 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 normally talk about uh, structure of the story and in the structure this this one part of that structure called a uh, counter argument there are people who are going to oppose your argument mm. so you need to anticipate that in your article and bring out the, the the strongest counter argument to your your position then address it there okay you say yes even though people are saying this and that but this is why what they say is not is not right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of the ways of dealing with it when you are writing an article. But that again is it, it does not necessarily mean you will not you will not cause controversy even if you do that in your article. So if controversy or debate arises and you are involved, just make sure that you are respect uh, you are respectful in in the way you 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 re you respond to people and also be calm All right. uh, you need to cultivate dialogue you need to look this uh, at this as an opportunity for dialogue mm. uh, and uh, make sure that you are not personal in your responses when you're doing some uh, when you are uh, responding to uh, maybe someone is even calling you names mm -hmm. don't go personal stick with issues mm. focus on, on on issues All right. um, then um, finally Sometimes you just need to disengage because uh, the truth is you're not going to convince everybody. Uh, and if uh, the, the debate is not taking a, a, a fruitful turn or is becoming hostile, just dis respectfully disengage. Disengaging means not not answering to whatever now, the comments that are coming through. Yes, I believe by then you'll have uh, done your level best mm -hmm. Yeah, to address some of the concerns. But, but again, it's also an opportunity for you to listen mm -hmm. and, and see what you might have missed. All right. Yes, so okay. you can also learn from that. But if, if it's not, uh, if it's taking... Um, a turn that is not fruitful and people are becoming hostile, mm. I, I advise that you, you just disengage and continue uh, with your work. Uh, of, of course, one of the things you, you, you must have done by that time or even when you are responding, you need to, you need to answer with facts, with research, uh, from credible sources. All right. Thank you, Francis. Today we have Francis Ayeko. He is a journalist and a media trainer as well. And today he's helping us know how to write persuasively. And uh, just to mention, Frank, whatever you saw somewhere, uh, Alice. I've seen Alice Ngigi. Alice somewhere. Ngigi yeah. is, uh, was our guest uh, not too long ago. Uh, yeah. And uh, she happens to have been a a student. Just the previous Thursday. That yes, time. actually it was previous Thursday mm. and she was Francis's student. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> your students are doing well. <laughs> <laughs> they are doing well. <laughs> <laughs> she addressed you as Mwalimu. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alice. <laughs> I'm proud of you. You remember the, the blog, uh, blog busting story she wrote? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, on um, uh, quiet, quiet quitting. Yes, yeah. quiet quitting. Yes. 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 Uh, I, I know where that story came from. Right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so that's good. 
it was one of the best stories uh, my OPED students uh, have ever written. Great. Right. Well done. Great well one. done, Alice. And uh, thank you for the good job you're doing, Francis. <laughs> and you know, I just thought of something just before we get uh, towards the end. I thought of, you know, sometimes you would wonder, fine, I will write, but who will ever publish me? <laughs> <laughs> and that could be something that would discourage someone. Yes. What do you tell us? People like uh, where, where Sharon do I and take the rest. Articles? <laughs> 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 what do I do with them? After writing, <laughs> you submit yeah. to, uh, to 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 the editor to publish. Okay, uh, what what happens is that uh, if you are serious about writing and about uh, getting published, mm -hmm. then you start by doing uh, what we call market research. It might sound uh, big, but it simply means start reading. Mm -hmm. as, as I say, you, you remember, Ro? Yes. Start reading. Read the kind of articles that you want to write about mm -hmm. and get to know um, which section of the paper they are normally published. That's okay. basic research. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that basic research would include things like, okay, so like how long are these articles? Mm -hmm. um, what what time of the day or uh, what, uh, what time of the week uh, do, are they published? Are they published daily or when? So just do some basic research that will help you understand how things are done in that segment you are targeting. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let me tell you um, uh, something about editors. Mm -hmm. People fear that uh, now if I write, uh, as, as you asked, uh, so who will, who will ever care to publish this article? Yeah. They are the editors. Editors are like, um, they're like uh, tomato sell sellers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what they are looking for? A good product. They are looking for good stories. Alice's story mm -hmm. did not take more than two days before the editor used it. Not because uh, the editor knew Alice, it's because uh, the editor found something that was very useful for the reader. Right. The, you know, the, an editor thinks about the reader, mm -hmm. not even about you, the writer. Mm -hmm. So you give an editor a story and they're like, okay, so how, how will this be taken by my readers? Will it be of interest to the reader? So if you know if you do your research well mm -hmm. and get to know the kind of articles they publish and do a good job, you'll get published. Right. Of course, one of the things we teach people in our in, in the course is how to submit articles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a whole a whole, a uh, whole unit. So yes. someone needs to understand how to submit. <laughs> yes, it's we 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 have uh, we have a session um, uh, in 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 our um, in our training call where to submit and publish your articles mm -hmm. and then how to build lasting relationships with editors. Okay. All right. Yes, we all teach right. all that. Interesting. Yes. Okay, because time is pretty much well spent, uh, Francis. How can you advise, you know, a Christian out there who's listening to us today and is, is, is interested and probably they were not even interested, but now as we speak, mm -hmm. after hearing you, they are interested in writing to share their faith and, mm -hmm. and convictions effectively. One, realize you have a voice, mm. appreciate that, and then appreciate the fact that your voice matters. You know, sometimes we think that uh, these people who write, in the words of um, a student in, in the current class I'm teaching, we think they have blue or red eyes, mm -hmm. the people who get published. Yeah, they're just people like you and me. <laughs> Their eyes <laughs> it's, it's, are only black and brown. Yes. <laughs> Nothing more. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's the same way someone who has never met Sharon and uh, only know Sharon by her voice try to, try to, to tries imagine. to imagine, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, uh, make sure, uh, I mean, uh, appreciate the fact that your voice matters mm -hmm. and therefore, and you have something of value that you can share uh, with the public. So, usijidarau. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Remember, you have a voice and your voice matters. But secondly, um, I want to quote um, Luke 12, 48. Mm -hmm. It says, let me paraphrase, mm -hmm. to, to whom much is given, right. much is required. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So if you are an expert there, you are a professional out there, you feel like you need to write and you are just asking yourself so many question, questions and doing nothing about it, know that you'll give an account because much has been given uh, to you. The fact that you feel like writing means um, 
God is urging you to do to do it. Right. To do something, to use the talent he has given you. Use that talent. Appreciate that God has given you a talent. Not everybody feels like you feel. Mm. Not everybody feels like they want to write. It's God. It's the Holy Spirit urging you. So if you're a Christian and you feel like uh, writing is your thing but you don't know where to start, just need look for somewhere to hone your skills, someone who can guide you, and then start writing. Okay. But don't sit on that talent. All right. To him, who much is given, much, much is, is required. expected. Yes. Indeed. Amen. And you say that we are the salt of the earth. That's, uh, thank you so much for bringing Francis. Does he also train someone who is interested in writing and publishing a book? I am, note that I am interested in writing on cybersecurity since I am a, an expert in that field. This is Eric. I don't train people on how to write books, but I edit books for them. So during the editing, I also advise them okay. on, on the content. All right. But then someone like that, cybersecurity, wow, that's a hot topic right now. Mm. Why don't you start by writing opinion articles? Right. And maybe one day you might even compile them into, a they book? might form a chapter mm -hmm. of right. your book. Definitely. Yes. All right. But I can guide. You can guide. All right. And speaking of guidance, Francis, we have just a minute to wrap it all up at op. Ed Hub. Yes. <laughs> uh, tell us a bit about it and what you do. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Sharon. Um, the OPED Hub. OPED, as you have said, is simply a short form for opinion. So it's a hub yeah. where we train people, we train experts from different backgrounds to become thought leaders in their fields through opinion writing. Mm. So we cover so many areas uh, that, that uh, if you observe, would help you uh, get your articles published. We cover, we, we have a course called Opinion Writing for Impact and Income. That's our flagship. Mm -hmm. But we also do editing. We also uh, do free webinars and workshops and something interesting called ghost writing. Mm -hmm ghost writing okay. uh, i'll not go much not into now. that yeah, yeah but <laughs> okay. but but um um uh, the our flagship is uh the opinion writing for impact and income course and then we offer free webinars like um uh, on 30th of this month we are going to have a free webinar you don't pay anything it's going to be online just join me so i'll i'll give my uh if you will allow me i'll give my contact details at the end of it uh, then uh, they can contact me uh, for those who are interested in joining the webinar. Actually, it's, you it's could free. you could do that now, Francis, because our time is pretty much well spent. You can give us okay. uh, a, a website, a Facebook, where anywhere Your number. Contacts. Feel yeah. free. Mm. Yeah, um, um, my number is zero seven two two forty seven zero zero eight one. That is zero seven two two forty seven zero zero eight one. Our Facebook page is uh, Oped Writing. Uh, you go to Facebook Oped Writing. Oped is O P O P E D E D. Yes. Writing. Writing right. as right. one word. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, Francis. We could go on, on and on, but our time is really gone, and we have to wrap it up. But thank you for coming. Thank you for helping us. May God bless you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate. All right. God bless Blessings. you too. Okay. Amen.